Welcome to Mrs. Robles flipped classroom video standards for measurement chapter 2. Uh, so while you're watching this video I recommend you take notes. It could be just one page. Please write down something that may not be listed on the slide. That way I know you've been listening to me and you will have practice problems at the very end to um, complete the homework assignment. So I'll start off with a chemistry joke. So what do you call 2,000 pounds of Chinese soup? A wonton. I know, it was pretty bad, but I had to throw it in there to get your attention. So you can see on the picture of the slide that there's a mother with her daughter, and they have a Pyrex, or measuring cup, full of milk, and a bowl of eggs, and a whisk. So these are tools of the trade if you're doing any kind of cooking in the kitchen. You probably know from experience if you're making something in the kitchen, you can't just throw any type of amounts into your recipe. You actually do have to measure things out, and especially with baking. You can't make cupcakes or pancakes or cookies without measurement. So the same thing happens with chemistry. We, we need to measure materials that we use in the lab. Okay, so let's talk about making measurements. Now, you will notice when you measure the length of an object that it's going to be difficult to get the same exact measurement with four individuals. You'll have slight variation in their results because people estimate things differently. So we need to take that into consideration when we're doing measurements in the lab. And we'll talk about that with the next slide. The same thing happens with mass. When you are measuring the object's mass with a balance, you could be using four different balances. And those different balances are going to give you four different values depending on the type of balance. So it's important to consider these things when we're making measurements within the lab. Okay, in order to understand those differences, we need to look at significant figures. You may have heard this before. If not, um, any measurement that's made within the lab has to have a degree of uncertainty. So that uncertainty typically is expressed as an error. And it's just because we can't exactly use every single number that we read off of an instrument. So what does this mean? That means any time you have a measurement in the lab, the last digit has to be uncertain. You cannot assume that every number that you see on the balance is considered certain. So we use significant figures to keep track of the certain digits along with the uncertain digits. You may notice uh, when you go to the lab this week that the balance, when you look at the last digit, that last digit may fluctuate. And part of the reason behind that fluctuation or that change is the air current pushes on the balance pan differently depending on how much air flow there is. So that last digit is considered uncertain and we need to treat it that way. Now we have two different methods with significant figures. Whenever we do multiplication and division, it's going to be treated differently than addition and subtraction. So you need to keep track of, there's actually two different rules, separating multiplication and division with addition and subtraction. And we'll go over that in a minute. Alrighty, so here we have a thermometer. And notice the thermometer. It has a bright colored um, indicator. Typically alcohol is dyed red in thermometers. And that measurement for that thermometer there, notice that the level of the alcohol is not exactly at the tick mark. It's actually above the tick mark. So looking at the thermometer, we know for certain that the thermometer reading is above 21 degrees. 
So what happens is that last little bit that is above the tick mark, we consider that uncertain and we estimate it. So this person that made this measurement, they estimated it to be 0.2. With the second thermometer, notice that the level of the alcohol is actually pretty close to the tick mark. So this person that did this measurement, they decided that it was exactly at the, the tick mark. So they called this measurement 22.0. So even though it's exactly at the tick mark, that last digit is considered an estimate or uncertain. And then lastly, we have another measurement where the alcohol level is definitely above 22 degrees, but there's a little bit more above that tick mark. And notice that this person they estimated it to be 0.1 because it's slightly lower than the first thermometer. So they made that last digit equal to 0.1. So that digit is considered uncertain and an estimate. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the rules. So for multiplication and division, notice that you look for the number that has the least number of significant figures. So you're going to essentially count up each group of numbers and the one that has the least number of significant figures, you're going to round your answer to that least number of significant figures. And don't worry, we will practice it. Number two, addition and subtraction. So with addition and subtraction, this is a little bit different. You need to pay attention. Notice that you look for the number of digits that are to the right of the decimal place. So the number that has the least number of decimal places, your answer, the decimal place is going to be equal to that. You're going to round to that number. And don't worry, we'll take, we'll take some practice problem there for that. Alrighty, here we go. So here's a piece of flooring, if you have ever laid carpet or tile down before. Well, this is a pretty big piece. This is 10 foot by 12.5. How do we figure out the area? We multiply. So we're going to multiply it. Now notice that there's two different sets of numbers. There is a number that has two significant figures and then there's a number that has three significant figures. So that little dot that's next to 10, that tells us that there's two significant figures. And we'll go into more detail later about that. So when we multiply those two numbers together, we get 125. But guess what? We cannot use that last digit because our rule is we look for the number that has the least number of significant figures. And 10 only has two whereas 12.5 has 3. So what do we do? We have to round. So <clears throat> if we have 125, do we round up or round down? We round up because 5 is um, five or more is where we round up. Therefore, the answer has to be 130 because our answer has to be two significant figures that zero is not considered significant. I know it's a little mind bending, but that's how we do it with multiplication. Division would be the same way. The only difference is instead of multiplying, we would divide. Alrighty, here we go. So addition and subtraction. So please remember this is different than multiplication. So what you do is typically you look for the number that has the least number of decimal places and that's going to determine your overall answer for addition or subtraction. So if you have two decimal places, you're going to round your answer to two decimal places and I'll show you an example of this. All right, so we have 132.56 minus 14.1. By the way, notice that these numbers have units. So G stands for grams. Uh, chemistry, we don't have any naked numbers, so you always need to include your units. So 
the people that are reading your measurements know what you're talking about. So which of those two numbers has the least number of decimal places? Is it the one on the left or the one on the right? Correct, it's the one on the right. Therefore, your answer, okay, your answer has to have only one decimal place. Now, you don't worry about getting rid of the last decimal place until after you do your subtraction. So you notice you end up with 118.46, but you can't have two decimal places. You can only have one. So what are you going to do? Are you going to round up or round down? You're going to round up because 6 is greater than 5. Therefore, the answer should be 118.5. Now notice, this is different from multiplication and division. Okay, if we were doing multiplication, our answer would be three decimal places. But here are, I'm sorry, not decimal places, would be three significant figures. But notice we have four significant figures here. But with addition and subtraction, instead, we are only looking at decimal places. So our answer must be rounded to the first decimal place. Okay, so here's your homework. You're going to do a series of six problems. I'm not going to give you the answers until tomorrow. Now, I'll give you a little help. So for number one, notice that there's three different um, measurements. You want to look for the number that has the least number of, of decimal places. So here we have 44.3, 2.13, 44.7. Notice that the first and third number both have only one decimal place. Therefore, after you do the addition, you're going to round to only one decimal place. So it looks like the, the first three are all addition or subtraction. And then the last three, you have multiplication division. So if we look at number five, okay, notice that we have three numbers. Here we want to look for the number that has the least number of significant figures. So is it 1.3, 2.334, or 0 0.355? Notice that the number on the very left only has two significant figures. Therefore, after you multiply, you want to round your answer to two significant figures. OK, so good luck. Bring your answers and your notes to class, and we will talk about the results. Good luck.